YouTube. What's going on, everybody? I uh, decided to change up some of these videos. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a whole playthrough of Elden Ring in anticipation for the DLC. And I'm um, hoping I can provide some help to anybody who wants to join the game. There'll be bits and pieces where we're not talking in this. The more we are. Um, here we are, a brand new character. Uh, it's a Vegapon class. For everybody, this will probably be your kind of bread and butter class to start with. You end up with a shield, a sword, <coughs> and some pretty good base stats to build a, you know, later builds character off of. Um, as you start the game, I started a little later for this video. Get through some of the tutorial stuff. Um, if you're brand new to Souls games, please go play that tutorial at the beginning. But this is kind of your first guy you see, and in the open world, you don't have to fight this guy, but I want to kind of show that even at low level, you very easily can beat him. All Souls games, for those that are new, have a rolling mechanic, uh, secure being an outlier, where it has pairing, but it's all timing based. Um, you roll through attacks like that. A lot of people that are new to these games think the rolling is like a dodge mechanic in other games, where it, it is in a sense, but you don't have to be away from the attack or the opposite direction. But you can roll right through it if it's timed correctly. Um, if you have played Souls games, you're familiar with that, but that is something I see You know, a lot of new people that are coming to the game try to get like away from the enemy. You don't really have to, especially with these big ones, it's actually better to be closer. Obviously, you do not have to do this again. This is solely for runes to level up. Um, and that that's actually it. There's really no other purpose to do this. And he is pretty hard at this level because you just don't do any damage to him, so it requires some perfection. And that, you know, one shot you <laughs> again this is a lot harder without the vagabond but <clears throat> we can choose like the samurai or whatever it is you do get bleed so that is nice for the katana um i was always fine if i'm actually gonna do this having a shield at the very beginning is nice we get rid of it you know pretty quickly but might as well have it For intensive purposes, we are doing a strength build um, as we get going here. Might do a little strength arcane. You know, I have so many characters, I've done some different things, but strength arcane is fun. Another thing for new players that you're probably seeing here, all bosses do have a second phase for the most part. What that means is like they get more aggressive or change their attacks, the rhythm, their pattern, some of them get stronger. Um, attacks to do more damage like that. Like before that was just like a regular bash or he'd stomp his feet. And as soon as we get in about half health, uh, he changes it. And this game, some other ones too, but they'll pull out a whole new health bar in the second phase. So it's really interesting um, to see new players that think they you know, beat somebody, see a bunch of clips. That's just the way it is. goes uh, the weapon you get it's pretty good you know I remember when the game first came out everyone was running with that making a strength faith build um, I actually did die to him at the very beginning so pick up your runes every time you die it'll, it'll mark it on the radar there uh, where your runes are so all you need to do is just go back to where you Died. You don't have to remember it. You can actually look on the radar at the top and follow that. Note, if you fall off a ledge or something, it'll be before the ledge. Very rarely does it, like, 
go to the bottom of where you died, which is good news. Um, for new players, I also recommend like take some practice out on these guys in these in this first area, little knights. Um, get you used to like attack patterns, when to attack. You know, most of the small enemies, you can just punish like that. You don't really have to worry about it. All right, so I'm checking here. Uh, yeah, right. Ronnie doesn't come yet. Alright, that's for a later part of the same video. Uh, at night, enemies I think are more aggressive and there's different versions of them. You get like bats and stuff that chase you. So I like playing in the morning, uh, early game. Makes it a little bit easier. There's the weapon for you. Does look cool, for sure. We cannot use yet. Nor will we with this build. Um, make sure you pillage corpses. I do it every time, regardless of what level I am. As they drop smithing stones, which are used to upgrade our weapons and armor and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so if you like a particular set, you can always farm that guy. Rest, fight him again, rest when you want to have it. Not every single, you know, enemy will drop it, but you know what, 90 something percent do? I mean, there's some stuff that I didn't even know that dropped, that dropped for me on the last playthrough that I had. So. Alright, so what we're doing is we're going to run up to this side of Grace. Kind of get the game going. This is what you should have done instead of fighting the tree sentinel guy at the beginning. So there's a cutscene here. So we'll watch that. Offer you an accord. Have you heard of the they serve at you? I can play the turning wood to aid you. You need O to the foot. Then accept summon me. Ah, I bequeath. Use it will summon torrent. Treat him with pretty cool little cutscene there. What she's given us Your thoughts. is uh, the option for our mount. So now that we have that, we should be able to go back to the church side of Grace that we were at. And we're going to start Ronnie's quest line. Again, you don't have to finish any of these. It's all optional. But you get your first summon ashes, which for new players would be uh, nice. I always put this in my second inventory slot, so you hold Y. That way it's out of the way. You can put it down below if you want to. Um, completely up to you. Before we get you going in that, this little encampment has a bunch of items. So you can just watch the playthrough, but you see these wagons? Um, there's always a chest on the back. Doesn't mean it's good, but it's always a weapon or something that you know, might as well have it.
One thing I do want to mention is when you see these little towers of the maps, that's how when you open your map, you'll see it. That's not going to be unlocked. Um, you have to go to those locations to see them, but you can at least see where you're going. And you'll see on the map these little red towers in the gray areas. That's where those are, so at various times I'll mark those. So we'll get them. It's a lot easier just to sprint through, grab the map. That way you know what you're looking at, elevation, stuff like that.
All right. So what we just got here at the bottom of that is the whetstone knife. What that's going to do is allow us to put affinities on weapons. So when you rest the side of grace, the Ash of War, the Storm Stomp, a bunch of them in the game, is your special attack. If you have a shield on, you need to put no skill or something or have it with two hands to use it. Like right now we're parry because my shield's doing it. Um, this is Ronnie. Tell her that you can. This is different ending of the game if you follow her quest on the way through. She'll tell you where she's going. That's a later problem basically, but talk to her so you can get the uh, wolf ashes. So, back to the Ash of War though. As you're upgrading your weapon, you're going to have a different scalings. So if you see here where it says like strength D, which should have paused it. Um, that's your scaling. So as a weapon gets stronger, that scaling goes up based on what type of weapon it is. And your Ashes of War will be with those wet blade or whatever. You'll get more than one or two of those throughout the game. There's a bunch of them. They give you different affinities. You'll pick one that is catered to your build. It'll make the maximum damage and profile for that weapon. And then Ash of War is, you know, whatever you choose to be. Some weapons can't be changed, um, but most of them can. What we're doing here is always level health first. Um, I would even recommend going to like 30 before you start upgrading to weapons. Now, I've been playing these games a long time, so I go to like 20, then I get my strength up, then I go back to health, back to strength, or whatever build, dexterity, that's what you're choosing. Um, I like, you know, I'm a big guy in real life, so I like just smacking shit. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to smack some shit. I'm searched for my, for the reason there is something I've acted that I am no me. So throughout these games, you have these enemies that I always call practice. So this one probably being the best one. If you you know want to learn how to fight on horseback better, just fight these guys a bunch right beside the side of Grace. Um, you also see this talking going on the bottom of the screen. Uh, they also give you a decent amount of rooms if you want to farm. Um, and their gear is kind of cool. Early game gear is good. See this guy talking. We're going to go find him here in a second. This guy can alter your garments. I kind of forgot where he was, so if you see some skipping of frames, that's just skipping around. Throughout this video, you may see that in, in the whole series. You're not missing any content, really. It's just me kind of goofing off exploring when I was recording this, so useless information for you guys. This is the bush you're looking for. A boy pops out. He alters garments, and there's a little quest line for him. There's a bunch of characters like this in the game. I would recommend Googling you know, the best ones. Because um, you can't, can do a lot of them, but you can't get, really get to all of them. Some of them intersect each other. We have to choose one or the other. Uh, no spoilers for you guys. But look at the map so far. Where you're supposed to be going is up to the top left. We're going to go explore down here. Get leveled up. Get used to the game for you guys. You know, that's really what you want to do. A lot of people that quit the game early, I think they went straight to Margaret, the first boss, and then they're like, oh no, no way. But 
a lot of Souls games are like doing this, right? So like you can, there's never had an open world one where you're just able to go explore. They're all linear where you can go to different places, but um, this one really gives you the opportunity to go get, not over leveled, but feel over leveled. Have the opportunity to explore some areas and have some fun. Our goal, we're going to try to knock off a lot of the map that's open to us right now. Get a couple weapons that I like having um, along the way. One of them being the Rusted Anchor. In the next video, I think we get the Great Sword. And you could pretty, we'll probably stick to that most of the game. So when you're fighting these guys, I always just find it easier. Like, they may get hit, but if you just sprint to their left... Like, yeah, you may get hit, and your horse may get hit. If you just go left, sprint after you swing, they suck. All the mounted people do this. You know, throw out a rage attack. Really simple to interrupt it, or just get hit by it. So. Nice, so you can farm gear like that. Good example of it. Alright, so if you see two giants walking anywhere in the open like this, there will be a bunch of people behind them. And they're carrying this wagon with an item. Now, this one's the Great Axe, which is an okay weapon. Um, how you unlock it, you have to kill one of the giants. You don't have to kill the second one, he'll just sit down. But it unlocks the wagon. You can sneak around, you really don't even have to kill all the people behind it unless you just want to. Most of the time, it's more annoying to kill them. Um, there's always one, you know, per the area, big guy, quote unquote, and, or two. And you know, it's not, it's not really that hard. Uh, how to kill giants? Smack their legs. Your strength builds a lot easier because you stun them really, really easily. See how the other guy gets on one knee. Thanks to Tim Tebow. What you can do is you can sneak around the back and get the great axe. Alright, so where we're going on the map, what you see up here, um, it's called an Evergale. Evergale? Evergale? Anyway, basically there's people that are locked in these other dimensions. This is kind of your first one. Also gives you a weapon you can use the entire length of the game. Strength build, dex build, doesn't really matter. It's an awesome weapon. Um, a lot of people will have trouble with this guy. This will be your first real, like, what I call speed boss test. Got some cool moves. And he builds up. See that bar on your screen? That's called bleed. There's different affinities, right? So you have poison, bleed, belt rot, madness, frost. All of them will eventually build up a meter and then do like a bunch of damage. Scarlet rot does damage over time really fast. Poison less fast. Um, bleed is like a giant and frostbite are like giant chunks of your health gone. His weapon, they bleed defensively.
Like I said about the rolling, this guy generally attacks in threes like that, and then he does a jump attack. So you can time what I do when I fight him. Time that. Two, three, and then he's gonna jump. Dodge. You need a couple hits in if you can. Two, three, and jump. Hit it. Game's a lot about patience, which especially if you're underleveled. You can punish that. Time it. Boom. So that's the special for his weapon. But as long as you're in his face, he generally does this thing most of the time. The further away he gets, he starts doing this shit. Learning attack pattern. Reacting to it, being patient. One thing to never do in these games is to get greedy. I could have sprinted out and tried to get that attack down. A lot easier. Patient. Take care. Okay, now we got a great sword. We can't use it yet. Not really one that I'm probably going to use because I'm going to sprint over and show you where towards the end of this video where some awesome strength weapons are but if you're running a dex build or a quality build awesome weapon Alright, so if you notice, some of the video is going to be a little sped up. The exploring gets kind of slow. Um, what we're doing here is I'm going to take you and show you one of the tunnels. So, uh, throughout the whole game, there are various tunnels. They're marked generally by a red little, like, I don't know how to describe it. Burning mark on the map is what it looks like. Um, and then, like, nooks and crannies, like this one that we're going to is in the top right side of the map right there. There's always going to be one at the end. They will either have bell bearings, which is what you're going to give to the vendor at Round Table Toe, Round Table Holt, which we'll explain in a little bit. That's how you buy upgrade materials for your weapons. Um, this game is more about the weapon upgrade than it is your level. It scales with it, but if the weapon's not upgraded and you're like 60 strength, you're still not going to do no damage. Um, so make sure you're doing these. Like part of the open world, it's cool. We're gonna speed run this. Try to make the videos a little sped up for you. Um, sometimes they're huge. Sometimes it's a catacomb at the end, which are a little bit harder than the tunnels. And notice how every lift, I always go up and down them because there's these little secret, you know, entrances drop off that have upgraded materials generally in little cubbies as you fall down. I mean, the game's just so well thought out that you know you just explore everything, have a good time with the game. Uh, yes, it's a challenging game, but I mean, part of the fun is just like this exploring mechanic. All right, so different mines have different enemies. I didn't explain this ever. So these are called summoning pools. You can use the little Erdry flowers. You'll have in your inventory, hurling call, hurling call fingers or something like that. That's how you do the co-op. So if you really want some help and summon somebody, you certainly can. Um, I always say that the game's, you know, designed for that. So if you're playing with a buddy, play with a buddy, have fun. You know, I, I hate gatekeeping. One thing I can tell you about uh, all those games is like, it's in the game, it's intentional, and you. Just, you know, they think they think it out so well. I 
Alright, so these guys are like kind of tough. We're tanking. Um, just be careful. Like, backstabs are always better to start with. Anyway, um, I could have sped this part of the video up, but I think I'm gonna keep slow. Kind of show you how these tunnels work, and you know, again, if they're sitting down like they are passive, you don't have to attack them. But why not? Most annoying. I hate rats. Every Souls game. Also, you know, leave a comment or something. These long form videos, what you want, or we can break everything up into sections. So, like, this tunnel would be a video. Um, if you like the no talking, you know, at certain points in the video. I think if you go up right there, the boss is right there. We want to get some items. Here we go back up. Walking right there does some damage, guys. Little fire dudes. I mean, realistically, just pick up the spithing stones. They glow yellow or white. I'm never going to use the Glintstone stuff, so... Oh shit at me. Oh yeah, you can also beat the whole game with a pickaxe. I'm going to run a cool run. Cool, cool pickaxe action. Get it from these guys. Also. No, it's got one. That's nice. Oh, item up there. The boss is just a troll. It is. For sure. Grab these items. See the white ones are called somber smithing. Um those are for like the special weapons, like the one we just got, the cool sword looking thing. Bloodhound's Fang. Boss weapon, and then like various you know weapons throughout. They're called special weapons. Other weapons take regular smithing stones. The way they work is like a special weapons only going to require one of each level of one. So it's so the one in the brackets. If it's a special one to level it to plus two. We'll take one two. Whereas the smithing stones, because they're much more frequent, um, takes like you know twelve total to get it from two to five. Plus two to five. I think this troll actually like this. Serious damage. I'm in the hitbox right now. Oh yeah. Um, give me the stun. So if you notice when you stun an enemy, um, wherever it's glowing. Walk up to it and hold R1 or RB. Hang on. Hold and that does that stagger stun. Alright, there we go. Alright, so medallions. Real quick. Medallions go in your 
equipment, inventory, different builds, which are different things. Um, as you go through the game, you'll have opportunity to have four total. So make sure you're looking up those and how to find them. We're going to find the ones we need. Made a different one based on your build. Alright, next section. Continue on through a little playthrough here. Um I'm gonna go towards the castle, but not all the way there. Up here, grab a couple items. So those little lifts like that. Um, you go down them the same way you go up. So like if you jump off a high ledge and you're gonna die. You see that thing, you land in it. Alright, Starlight shards, uh restore. FP, I think. No. I think there's a limited number of them. See? Jump in it. Alright, so this, I'm going to tell you guys. Sprint through it. No need to waste time while you're getting catapulted. Don't sort keys open. Um, see, like two little imps in a fog door, or if there's an ever jail and the two little imps statue, they open those. You can buy them, find them throughout the game. Alright, here's one of these NPC quest lines. He's gonna ask you to see how her dad is or give her a letter or something. It is sped up, by the way. So. Does it sound like no. mouse? Yes, we're gonna kill her dad later. Um. Right, so tells you castles up this way. I right, see the wagon. I was wondering how people struggle with this area. Amount of dogs. I don't know why I jumped off. Those are like the bloodborne dog. Uh, these little bugs just, you know. Sometimes they contain but they're silver. It's not every single time. It's only the lakes later area of this one that have nothing. Um, but if it's silver, it'll generally have an astral core. If it's gold, it'll restore your health. If it explodes, that's good news. Gives you nothing at all. Alright, so we're gonna get the map real quick here. Then um This is more of just knowledge of the game probably see these people that I'm about to show you like, randomly um, but at certain places and points in the map if you wait till nightfall like I said the enemies change sometimes there's uh, an enemy called the Knights Calvary uh, oh by the way this armor right here is pretty good you run close to the game with it if you want it so um, and there's a stone sword key and some other stuff so like the vendors are cool this game they do have helpful stuff anyway Knights Calvary guys generally drop cool stuff and later in the game you get their armor and it's badass I'm gonna run into you how to fight this guy it works a lot like the tree sentinel they'll have you know they'll have different weapons but the flail like it's really not that hard and it's right here you just pass time till nightfall and you can just 
keep doing it if you want to practice. So, through the fight. Move on to the next mission. Him gone. Let's look at our map. Alright, so we're down here in Weeping Peninsula, the bottom side of the map. So if you see the tree in the middle, it's gonna have an Erd Tree avatar. Those are relatively tough, they get harder as the game goes on, obviously, it scales with you. But that's where you get um, things to mix in your flask of. Wondrous Physique or something, that's what it's called. Um, again, there's a little bit of build difference with this, like with what how you want to run it, personal preference. Whilst you're fighting, you can change it at every side of grace. So like if you're fighting a holy person, you certainly can you know, change it to holy negation. And there's a bunch of these on the map to get different ones. So like the first one you get, I think, is health and... Something else where it restores half your health, so it's like an extra heal. And then there's one that like negates all damage for one attack. Like a little bubble around you. I like that one a lot. So we're just gonna explore and kinda knock out the peninsula. Yeah, as much as we want to right now.
where we're pulling up to is a church. There's various of these across the whole map. Every one of them, for the most part, is going to have an item in them. Sacred here. That added, added, adds charge to your flask, your healing. So you go to flask, hit it, and it'll say plus one on it. Okay. So trees that are golden throughout the map will have a thing called gold seed. That upgrades how many heals you have, or magic things, whichever you know, build you have, and how many you split. And then um, sacred tears increase your charge. How many? So if you pick up blood grease, uh, that is going to something you put in a, your cycle where your heals are, and you add that to weapons that are available. Some special weapons you can't, or if it's got um, in a Infinity on it, like blood or something. You don't have to kill these turtles, but you get a shell if you do. Sometimes. I don't think I've ever gotten one. I kind of feel bad killing them. Uh, where these jellyfish are, generally, no matter where you're on the map, they're going to show you where a tunnel is. We're going to go knock out this tunnel over here, and the next clip. So these catacombs, sorry, I think I said tunnel earlier. These catacombs have items and all kinds of stuff in them. They get huge later in the game. And this one's still pretty big. Um, basically, all of them have a function. So that's how you heal them. That's how you summon people, sorry. You know, do co-op. Um, all of them have a heavy door like that. Make sure you pick up these. This is how you upgrade you, uh, your summon people. There's different versions. There's Grave and Ghost, depending on what style the summon is. The skeletons are easy, but make sure you hit them when they're down like that, or else they do respawn. Pick all these up. You see that statue up there? That's a lever that opens the door to the boss. So your goal in these, is like a maze, is to find out how to get to that lever. Sometimes it's really hard, sometimes it's not. Obviously the earlier ones are easy. Er. And then there's hidden walls throughout these sometimes. It's really well designed. They're fun. And sometimes people lie. Just to have you smack a wall. Little, little Dark Souls humor there. <sighs> Alright, so this. Oh. So, obviously, you probably notice I stun a lot of enemies. That's just with the greatsword. That's why I love strength weapons. The stun and stagger is really nice. So you're going to run past this. This guy. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. So what you're going to do is smack this. I'll take it down. You can grab Adams.
I just love with that. It jump attack in the game. Super cool. Alright, so there's our lever. Again, if you want, just go straight to the boss and get out of here. There's some item that you potentially miss. I like showing you guys you know, as much completion as I know of. So the best thing to do this little section. There's a bunch of skeletons. And all you get is this. Thing. Smack this. I kind of messed this up. You kind of want to summon them all. Before you do that. And the fire will kill them. Things a little message you can throw at people. Hey, fire good. Alright, so generally the doors at the beginning, so you can go back and rest if you want to. These guys do bleed damage and really fast. And poison. Or stun you. They're really weak. See, that's blood boss. Not good. And yes, the lone wolves are like your first one, your easy one, but so you got another summon there. Um, you do need more FP for most of the summons. Um, so if you want to run like a summons, you know, have a bunch of them, then I would recommend leveling your FP, which is your mind. If you're not doing like PvP, you're trying to build a build only to level 150 or something. Of course, you can level up as much time as you want, up to 700 something. Okay, so that's the first catacombs I think we've done so far. So always, always pop these, and then kind of see where my level's at, and I'll go farm. I'm close. I'll just go kill. These guys don't drop anything hardly, but. I keep killing them. The gains so basically a free level that you're this close, might as well do it. Looks that doesn't finish them. enough. Alright, we're going to keep exploring the Weeping Peninsula on the bottom side of the map. Alright, so if you see these things throughout the map, as you get boss remembrance, which is after you beat the boss, it'll give it to you. These guys give you the opportunity to take out the moss and the legs and go inside of them. I mark, I generally try to mark them, something like that or something. 
I remember they're at. And you can get both boss weapons because you can duplicate the remembrance. Now you only get one per one of these guys. So if there's a particular boss you like, both their weapons um, or spells or whatever, you just want them all. Then you can go to these guys and get them. I'm gonna go up here to this church though. Get another sacred tier. Alright, so we're going to go up here. Um, the steak and marikas things. It's in the tutorial, but just like put you closer to the boss, so make sure you've got it active. It'll be in the top left corner underneath all your status bars. Alright, these things are a pain in the ass. Honestly, I think it's easier to fight them on not horseback. Just roll. Because they have <laughs> crazy range. And they do do a lot of damage like that. Like I said, a little bit easier out of the horse, personally. Now you can sprint away from them and so on. They do a various attacks, and as they get later in the game, they'll do like affinities, like rod or something. Um, but in general, they do the attacks with their staff, which you can just roll. They'll jump and do like a little explosion underneath them. You punish them after that, right here. Punish them. And then uh, they do one where they'll stab their staff from the ground. It'll explode. And then some of these little, like, star things spell. And that will chase you. So make sure you running in the direction left and right. The big overhand just hammer him off that. And yes, all the summons stand way too close. Make sure you hold R1 there when you're facing the thing. Alright, so here's your explosion. And then these things chase you. That is super fast. Doing it twice in a row is egregious. One thing I don't think I've ever mentioned: if you use your stamina bar all the way to zero, you won't be able to sprint until it's all the way back up. So, just like any other game like this, your stamina management is important. All right, so there's our first two mixes. You could really run these the rest of the game, but you know, change them up for boss, it's always smart. So here's one of the red little bug things. Take this out, it'll give you some of your flash charges back. There you go. That explains it, but... Alright, so that's that section done. Move on to the next.
Alright, so you saw where I'm parked on the map. I kind of just skipped all the jumping down and all that stuff. Here's another tunnel. And I think this one gives us our rusted anchor weapon. Um, I level up. I wish there was a select all option, but I get why they don't. Like, just like, use all the roots. So these little, these guys are like fast, but they're generally pretty weak. Any like the beast thing, generally you can stun pretty easy, so. Lots of the bigger ones won't stun as easy. Make sure you explode these fully, like we said, the first tunnel and the catacombs, because. I mean, there's just free smithing stones and stuff everywhere. Punch me. You get stabbed for that. Alright, so those things that we just picked up, we get different versions of those throughout the game. They take away the affinity. So let's say if you have Scarlet Rot build up, eat that, it'll take it away. It doesn't have to have the meter full either. Even if it's only halfway. Um, and the reason why we're exploring like this is getting a weapon that you don't, that you can actually use, like, most of the game, like what we're getting right here, to me, is more valuable as you go to Margaret, over to Castle, Godric, Renala, because you don't want to waste all these upgrades that you're getting for free here in the early game on a weapon that you're not going to use, you know. 20 minutes from now. And yes, you can, you know, get the bell bearings, which we'll explain as we get them. Then you can buy unlimited of them, but then you're having to farm runes, which is kind of a waste of time. Alright, so Exalted Flesh is a really good item. It increases your attack out, but attack power. So you put that, you know, as you get them in your cycle on your uh, D-pad. At the bottom. Oh, yeah, I missed that. Hey, you quit punching me now. So the ones with big wings, fly and shoot arrows. They would take these out first. Oh, that was lucky. Yeah, nice. To be honest, I have no idea what those things do. I don't think we're used to obviously do something, but all right. So the boss is down this way. this. 
so the arrow guys are annoying. As these get harder, it's much better to manage your heals better than I do. I mean, but really, like, these really wouldn't aren't going to kill you, unless you summon. So this, like, this guy is actually a regular enemy. Our weapon. We love to see that. That's the reason you go explore before you just go dive into bosses. That's how they design this, right? It's an open world game. Take advantage of it. Especially with the sneak mechanic. Alright, so if you notice, my strength is not high enough, okay? What that means is to one-hand it. But if my strength is like one and a half times less than the required, something like that, there's an equation. If you two-hand it, I can use it. No problem. Now what we've done, in the meantime, all I did was upgrade the weapon. Um, to do that, go back to the original church at this point because we haven't gone to where we can go to the round table hold yet. We're on the way to do it right now. Um, anyway, go back to there. You can put it like plus three. Put an affinity on it. Grasher's War. Uh, heavy for strength builds is the best. It scales the best. Alright, so... Where we just left was at the very first side of grace that we went to after we fought the big tree guy. We're straight up the castle gate. Do not have to fight the people there. I don't want to buy them on your horse. A couple items you can get there. Not that that's massive. All right, so this woman's very important. This little thing. Saucer dialogue. She is going to be the person that upgrades your summons. Oh, she gives you a cool jellyfish. So, we're gonna do her quest line. I'll show you how to do that in the videos. Basically, it's like, just follow the main game and you'll, you'll do it anyway. But we're gonna go right up through here. And Margaret is literally right here. In the castle. Again, you do not have to fight any of these guys. Wild Strike's just a pretty cool actual, by the way. You like, constantly, oh. you like constantly swing it, and then you press RB or um, RT, and roll, or whatever that button is. Using the PlayStation controller. What in here? Smack. Oh. Oh yeah, so if they have shields and do that, you have to do this little like you parried them kinda. Alright. First main boss of the game. Up right now. Um I summon this guy, which is an NPC character. Again, they're in every game. You don't have to do it. I have always thought that you have to summon him to get him to go to round table hold. I don't think that's true. At all. I think it's just here for like getting players. But nonetheless. Foul tarnished. In search of the Elden Ring. That's so cool, man. In 
this guy. By the flame of ambition. All right, so this dude, I mean, we've gotten a weapon. Makes it a little bit easier. But he does some pretty cool attacks. Uh, when he summons his swords, he'll follow up with a slam. Punish it off that. For future reference, that would have went down significantly faster had I not summoned the torture dude. Uh, when you use summons or you're doing co-op, boss will have more help. Alright, second phase. I said earlier, all bosses have them for the most part. And this one, he pulls out his big ass hammer, and then does a little bit more like fast attacks. You're going to start throwing daggers like this. He pulls it up with a big slam. Go get this weapon and use the build. Summon so easy. Especially if we didn't have summons. Like, I didn't summon this guy, man. Way too easy. Alright. As your first main enemy done. Alright. And you're really in the Elden Ring now. Now what's going to happen, he's going to show up, and by this round table hold, I'll run you a little bit of it. I've been testing you to see whether and it seems my torrent, whereas I may, there is but one, I can take you to the round table hold, gathering place. Very well. All right, extremely important area. Talk to all the NPCs. It is safe. Guys, a douche. Um, remember your. You whoop his ass later. Uh, spoiler. Here's our boy. You're running faith build. It's an incantation from him. Pretty cool. Alright. Then you got this cat. Ah, he's gonna tell you he's looking for somebody. By the way, she's my servant. Take your eyes off if you find her. Be sure she's a servant. She's been like in past. Lost count of the number. And then later Roger pops up there. That's why I summoned. I thought he came earlier for some reason. But he doesn't. Alright, so here, your upgrade guy. So every time you're gonna upgrade a weapon, you're gonna come to him. He'll, if you get something called Lost Ashes of War, he'll duplicate whatever Ash of War, so you could have the same one on multiple weapons. I have to take it off. Alright, in that door to the left is the chick called Fia. I don't do her quest line. Like the bad ending, quote unquote. That's even work. Plus, it's annoying. She hugs you for like seemingly forever. Get a moat from this lady. Later in the game, she when you come back to round table hold randomly, she'll attack you. Alright, this is your shop. We don't have any smith stones in there as of now. Weapons, armor, blah blah blah. As you get bell bearings or kill NPCs or whatever, which you'll see as we come up, come offer them to her. Here. We don't have any, but they'll then pop up. So then you can buy an unlimited amount of the smithing stones up to now. You have to go get the bell bearings. All right, so that'll do it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know in the comments how you like this record over, kind of sped up process, really first crack at a walkthrough. So enjoy, subscribe.
Catch you in the next one.